Hello, everybody. Mighty Benaya here. We just got the uh, map for the arena game. So wanted to show you all exactly where everyone landed and go through our initial thoughts and strategies on how to deal with this map. So as you can see, I am playing as England. We have Silver Star as Germany. Um, Maverick, who has not quite joined the game yet, he is the last player to join. He will be Sweden. Um, Harkhold is Turkey. And last on my team is Alpha Dago, who is playing Morocco. Um, against us, we have uh, Spain, who just always gets carried in all of his games. Benjagun is France. Batrick is Italy. King Spankerton is playing as Austria-Hungary. And Raya Force is playing as Russia. So, a couple of things to note with this map. All of our opponents are touching each other, um, or at least close to touching each other. No, they're all touching each other. So, I always get carried, touches Benjagun, touches Batterick, touches Spankerton, touches Raya Force. We, on the other hand, don't touch each other uh, at all in any of our provinces unless we go via water. So, Harkhold, <clears throat> his closest ally is probably Silver Star or maybe Alpha Doggo. Um, Silver Star is going to come close to touching Maverick, but again, we've got Denmark in between, and he has to go over water. So it's going to be more difficult for us to reinforce and to gang up on our enemies than it will be for our enemies to gang up on us. Um, also, <clears throat> on this map, oil is really, really important. And you'll notice that oil is pretty evenly split. Um, so I don't have any. Uh, Benjagun and Always Get Carried don't have any. And Harkhold doesn't have any. Uh, and I believe Spankerton doesn't have any. But Raya Force has a double and a single. Maverick will have one. Um, Alpha Doggo has lots. And Batterick has one. So, what our plan is, as of right now, and this is subject to change, um, for my teammates, I welcome feedback, um, but I talk to Harkhold a lot, and um, I believe Silverstar was present for the conversation, but he was, he was getting tired and about ready to go to bed, uh, as was Alpha Doggo. But what we are looking at is targeting Russia. Um, for our first major offensive. The reason that we're thinking about targeting Russia is a couple of reasons. One, we can get to it. So Maverick will be able to access Russia. Silver Star probably shouldn't join in on the attack, but he will be able to be reinforced once we take out Russia. Um, Harkold can target Russia. He's fairly close, um, and can offer a contingent of soldiers. And I'm over here on an island, and I'm close enough that I can send support that way. So, here's the plan, as of right now, which obviously could change by the next time I update everyone via a video. The plan is for Harkhold to intentionally expose a large force um, don't have an exact number yet, but intentionally expose a large force the day before um, the, the war happens. Um, whether he sticks a force um, in, in, the, um, in the Black Sea um, up below uh, Sevastopol, or um, looking like it needs to, it's going to go to Kishinev, um, the goal is for him to be seen in order to perhaps draw Russia's forces south. But that will be a distractionary force. Um, Harkhold is going to obviously need to reinforce his borders. 
He needs to be careful of King Spankerton. Um, but the real attack is going to happen up here. So um, Maverick and I will rally our forces um, up here out of, out of enemy line of sight. Um, we will have to send scouts to see where his scouts are to make sure that our main army is outside of line of sight. Once the majority of his forces, uh, of Raya forces forces, are drawn south to deal with Harkold, we will take that province that I am not Russian enough to pronounce, uh, Kandalaskia. Sorry, I'm butchering that. Um, and then on into St. Petersburg. And hopefully even be able to take um, Vologda um, because of the double oil, which will put pressure on them to get more oil because this is a large portion of the oil of the enemy force, which is important in mid and late game. Once Maverick and I coming from the north, um, swoop through his provinces, we can reinforce Silver Star. Silver Star needs to hold out, and I will probably send some forces, and I'm sure Maverick will send some forces, to help Silver Star hold out. Because what we believe is going to happen, just due to the map and due to things that um, King Spankerton has said in his Alliance Duel video... We think that Silver Star is going to get crushed, um, or at least that Spankerton is going to try to crush Silver Star. Benjagun will attack from the west. Spankerton will attack from the south, um, helped by Baderick and likely helped by Ryaforce. They have four people positioned perfectly to um, annihilate Silver Star. And not only that, I always get carried, can... Um, send forces to help as well. Because there is a two-day peace, we're not sure where he's going, to, where they're going to move all of their forces during that time. So I always get carried maybe moving a large majority of, of uh, his forces into Benjigun's territory to attack Silver Star. Um, and Baderick could be moving a lot of um, a lot of his forces into Spankerton's territory for an alpha strike on Silver Star. So because we are confident that Silver Star is going to be the target, and we are wanting them to be confident that Harkold is going to fight Raya Force, um, we think that we can guess where the majority of their forces are coming from and where the majority of their forces are going to be so that we can strike a pretty nasty blow in the very, very beginning of this duel, uh, this arena uh, practice duel. That is where we're at right now. Um, one additional thing that I would like to put out there for my teammates, we have 188,000 silver, or at least I have 188,000 silver starting off this game. You can see we've got 10,000 wheat, 10,000 fish, 15 for iron and wood, and then 10 for each energy, and then 188,000 silver. I think it would be incredibly beneficial for us to bank, to save 20,000 silver for spies, uh, so that the day before, like right before day change of war day, of D-Day, we hire spies, each of us hires one, and we can put it in a province that has a fort that we want to attack. So say, um, say Raya Force has built a level two fort here. We can all put a spy in that fort to sabotage, military sabotage. One military sabotage spy is not going to do anything. But if all five of us put one in there, the odds of especially early game when there are not a lot of buildings built in these provinces, the odds of being able to disable um, or even destroy a fort are much higher. Um, and that is how we're going to blast through their defenses because 
if you remember what happened in the Alliance duel, uh, Spankerton woke up and, um, and Harkold's, uh, the Germany's provinces were gone. His defenses were gone. All of the armies that were defending Germany were gone and they had forts there. I think that the other alliance, and I think this is a good idea, it's a good plan, and uh, Spankerton talked about them using spies for economic sabotage um, throughout the provinces. I think that it's a good plan for each of us to have one at the beginning of the game, so nobody is investing large amounts of money, but we can coordinate targets to decimate their infrastructure. Early game, day one of fighting, so I guess day three, it would be best to target forts. But if in the long game we're able to take out Rhyforce and we're able to confiscate his oil, this right here is a phenomenal economic target because this would be their only remaining oil. And if we can sabotage it down, we don't have to take it because a low morale province or a province that we are stealing oil from, destroying oil from, prevents them from generating oil, which means they have to go to the market in order to get oil. And if we control all of the, uh, all of the oil, all of the player generated oil, I should say, um, we have a heavy influence on the stock market price, which means they are going to have to buy at a really high price. We can sell it at a really high price. We can get more spies to sabotage forts and sabotage their oil production. And they won't be able to build factories and they won't be able to build tanks and they won't be able to build aircraft. One of the really great things, mid-game or late game, especially if we can take out Raya Force and control the oil, <clears throat> look at where the look at where the navies are going to be, be be spawning. We have Sweden, which has all of the ports up here. Um, if you only build ports where you've got doubles, uh, Sweden's got this this province here, and we will have this province here very protected. If we can take out um, this province, we have that one. So there's three provinces in the north. I've got lots. I'm England and all of my doubles are on the coast and I've got three. Silver Star has got a double. He's got Berlin, which is a double on the coast. So he can build ships from there. And this is just where we would automatically build double factories and harbors anyways, or factories and harbors anyways, because we have double tiles. Um, we have down here um, in Morocco, we have a double there. Um, we have a double here. So look, let's look at what they have. Okay, so Spain has one there and one down here. So Spain has two. Spain could be a Navy threat. What does France have? France has got one double tile on the coast. The, their other two double tiles are inland, which both means they cannot build a harbor there, meaning their uh, resource generation is worse, but also they don't have the opportunity to just automatically, off of what they would already build, build cruisers or battleships. Uh, Italy will be a bit of a powerhouse. They have three, so the Mediterranean will be a little bit difficult for us, um, but Harkold has got two... Uh, two here. So he's got his capital and he's got this one here, uh, Smyrna. And then we also have the potential of if Harkold takes it over, um, this province in the Black Sea. So mid game, if we can take out Raya Force, we are in a phenomenal position to dominate the seas and we're in a good position to bully um, the other, the, our opponents with resource production, um, we can absolutely wreck their economy if we can eliminate their access to oil. 
Um, and not only that, but Raya Force is so far away, he is on the end, that it is going to take forever for I always get carried forces to travel all this way to defend him. If we can take him out, we have a front, a single front that runs um, runs east to west. Um, we've got the north covered, and all we have to do is start traveling west along this route until we can finish them all off. So I'm excited. That's the plan thus far. I do want to reiterate for my players and so that everybody else is aware, there are three rules that are not regular rules. They're custom rules um, for this game that are not bound by the system. The first rule is no gold marks. We're not using any gold marks for this particular game. Um, if There's no problem using gold marks in... Other games, I use them pretty consistently for like increasing morale on uh, bombers when I'm fighting AI in like 100 games because I hate losing bombers to just infantry stacks. Um, but this game, we are not using gold marks at all. No gold marks, period. Uh, rule number two, um, and this was a slight oversight that I believe was caught by Harkold. Um, if somebody else caught it, I apologize. It might have been Alpha Doggo. But we are not going to attack any AI until we are allowed to ta attack other players. So we're not allowed to declare war on any players until day three, I believe. We are also, it should have been done this way, but Spankerton didn't think about it. We are not going to attack any AI until day three also. So no war at all until whenever we can declare war on players, which I believe is day three. And then the last one is mostly for my players to be aware of. Um, Spankerton and I chatted before we knew where all the nations were. Um, my concern is because I want to see the other alliances um, history throughout, um, I was terrified that Spankerton would be in a position that we would, the best strategy would be to eliminate him first, and we wouldn't be able to see all of that. Um, and I was concerned that, you know, maybe I was going to be in the position to get um, just absolutely obliterated in the very beginning, so all of the, our opponents couldn't see what happens uh, for the duration. So, in the event at whatever point we take out Spankerton, because I am more confident that he is in danger at this point than I am. His last province, when he is down to one province, what he will do, and we are going to allow this because we want to see the stream, he is going to trade provinces with one of his allies. So he is going to get off the front so that he can live to cast another day. And then he is going to request peace from everyone that he is at war with. We are going to give him peace because that uh, makes our morale better. Um, it, in addition to it doesn't hamper his morale so he can survive to cast throughout the game. Um, and we have the same deal if for some reason, which it's possible, but I don't think it's likely, if I always get carried and Benja Gun knock me back all the way to um, my last province, then I am going to trade with whoever is not on the front, whoever has a province that's not on the front line. So I'm going to say probably this province just because I picked it at random. And then I will make peace with all of them so that I can continue to cast and we can all get learning experience from this. That's all that I have for now, guys. Um, please let me know if you have any ideas. If you think that, you know, maybe this plan isn't the best plan and we should have another course of action. This is the best that we have come up with in the short time frame that we've looked at the map. I'm excited about this round. I think that we have a good shot. It's going to be a challenge for us. I think that we 
have the harder hand, but I don't think that they will have any idea what we're going to do. And we know pretty well, we have a pretty good idea what they're going to do. And even though we don't have the territory edge, I think we have the edge as far as knowing what to expect. So um, I look forward to talking to you all next time. Uh, Soli Deo Gloria, and I will chat with you next time.